a little bit back, a little while back, we um, we heard about this Bigfoot in uh, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Pennsylvania. So we went back there. We did a little investigative reporting. That's and, right. Uh, you can watch that video up here or something. And you can watch some more. There's a whole bunch of videos made about that. So uh, within all that, we got a comment on one of our YouTube videos. From a little lady named Katie. Little lady named Katie. And she told us about the uh, same area around Indiana, Pennsylvania. Uh, there's an alien abduction call, 911 call. Now, our last call turned out to be fake, <coughs> but uh, this one seems pretty real. Yeah, this one was, this one was a little spooky. It kind of kind of gave me the shivers. We've done some research. We can't find anything that it's been copied off of. We're pretty sure we have a real 911 call. Yeah, it took us forever to find this damn call. Yep. So, we listen to this call and... It was pretty damn scary. Yep. There ain't no doubt about that. So we listened to the call and we decided, hell, I've seen some shit in my time. Jim Bob said he's seen some shit in his time. Yep. So we're going to take us a little minute here and individually tell you a little story about what we saw. But before we do that, the reason we're doing all this is because me and Clint, we booked us a flight back to Indiana, Pennsylvania. We're going to do us a little same style as the Bigfoot investigative reporting. That's right. We're going to go find us one of them Martian men out yep. there. We know there's Martian men out there, and we're going to find them. So without further ado, Jim Bob's going to start us off. This is his story. All right. All right. Well, let me take a shot before I get into this. When I was about seven years old, I was sleeping in my bed. All of a sudden, I heard a knocking at my door. I went out as my mom. Thought it was something crazy, but I, I, it just kind of startled me. Next thing I know, I fall asleep. I'm dreaming about little Betty. Whoever I'm messing around with that time, I'm just dreaming about her. All of a sudden, I woke up, and I seen this big light shining under the door. I thought it was my mom. I figured it could have been my pa. Uh, Kevin was a little kid. He might have been crawling through the hall. I don't know, but uh, turns out it wasn't none of them. Because I started screaming, hey, Ma, Pa, Kevin, let me know if it's you, because I'm getting real scared in here. Nobody said nothing. So, uh, so I went under their covers. I know that it doesn't uh, really protect you, but I felt as if it was protecting me. Next thing I knew, something grabbed onto my damn leg. First thought I had in my mind was, Jesus, this has got to be a Martian man that's catching me. What else could it be? Might have been the boogeyman. I might have been believing in the boogeyman at that time. But... It might have been a Martian man, and uh, turns out I, I freaked out. I started kicking him like uh, like Jean Claude Van Damme. Started kicking that alien. Next thing I knew, I heard scurrying and scurrying away. It sounded like there was claws on my uh, wood floor, and I cried myself to sleep. Next thing I know, I woke up in the morning. That was all. I, uh, I just felt weird about the whole thing. So that was my situation. I pretty swear swear as a Martian man. Could have swore. That's about all. So, I'm driving back one night from a friend's house. It's like 2.30 in the morning. I've had a few to drink. Ain't gonna lie. So, I'm driving back and I'm on this old back road. And there's farm fields all around. And, uh, again, I was a little drunk. Probably shouldn't have been driving. But that's just how we do things. So, I'm driving back and, uh, I make this turn. And like I said, it's all farm fields, so it's pretty open. There's hills on either side. Pennsylvania's like that. So I look up on this hill, and I'll be goddamned if I didn't see some lights. Lights I never seen before. And I know this road, I drove it a lot. There was a triangle here. There was like a light, and then two more lights. And there's a triangle on the other side. On the middle of it, there was like a globe type thing with lights going around it. I, I know it sounds pretty cliche. I know that's what all them UFO sightings look like, but I'm going to tell you right goddamn now. What I saw scared the shit out of me. I sat there for about 10, 15 minutes. Ooh, trying to shake that buzz off. And uh, I'm like, this, this, is a, this ain't right. I had to go get somebody. I had to prove that this was right. And back then, in them days, there wasn't cell phones. And I didn't have one of them little cameras, little wind-up ones that you could take a picture of. So, I got back, oh, got back in that driving mode, and I started driving. And I came back to this little town, people I knew. I went over to my buddy's house, and I said, you got to get the fuck up. You got to come out here and check this out. Well, his sister happened to be sleeping on the couch, so I got both of them in my car. 
one guy still putting a shirt on, no shoes, no socks. We get in the car, we drive back out there, and those goddamn lights were still up there in that sky. We sat there for about a half hour trying to figure out what it might be. Is it some farm equipment with the lights on? Is it a house? Is it uh, some kids up there partying, have some weird lights set up? I don't know. But we sat there for about a half hour trying to figure that shit out. We couldn't come up with nothing. Then this other car pulled up and they stopped. And we asked them, like, hey, what are them lights up there? He said the same thing, didn't know what the hell they were. So, and like I said, it's like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning by this time. My, I'm pretty goddamn sober at this point. The lights are still there. So I know it wasn't with the alcohol. So, we decided, well, we're going to go and see if we can find a road up around there. Like I said, hometown, we know these parks. We start driving, there's a road that goes up. This is a little ways down. There's a road that goes up, so we uh, get ready to start making that turn. There's a car coming the other way. Car stops. It's the same guy we talked to at the other intersection. He's like, oh, there's just a house up there, and there's some candles in the window flickering, and that's what the lights are. Now, I know that guy was full of shit, because I know there ain't no house up there. And it was you could see the damn trees. And it was right at the top of the trees. It was probably 20 feet above the trees or so. It wasn't, you know, wasn't that high. But it was low enough that you could tell that it was higher than a house, but lower than a plane could have ever been. And it was in one spot. So I don't know what the hell it was. The, my buddy was with me. He's like, hey, let's just walk up on that hill. I'm like, you out of your goddamn mind. So we ended up calling it a night, went back, dropped him off. I went home, went to sleep. Every damn time to this day when I drive through there, there ain't no goddamn lights up there. Still ain't got no idea what it might be. I ain't told too many people this because, let's be honest, people are going to laugh when you tell a story like that. But I'll let y'all make your own conclusions. You can tell us and tell me if there's anything you might have seen that looks something like that or similar. So, as you can imagine, this was a pretty touchy subject for us. Yep. So uh, after we looked into what that there Katie said and we found that damn call, which was a pain in the ass, I might add. Yep. Them 911 operators don't want to work with you whenever you're asking for some weird shit like that. It sounds like there's a big cover up on it. Something's all. going on, I'm telling you. You have to stay tuned for the video. So since we were so enthralled by all this shit, we decided we better get out there and look for that Martian man. Yep. There's probably Martian men in that woods. There's got to be. There's evidence somewhere that someone was abducted. Yep. we got to try and find it. So we're going to go back there, we're going to fly back there. That's right. Uh, drop everything we're doing. We're going to get back there, and we're going to take about three days. We're going to do a full investigative report. See what we can find in them woods. Yep. There's got to be something somewhere. Yep. We're going to even try and get us a phone call with the, uh, if we can get the kid that was supposedly abducted, we're going to talk to him. If not, we're going to see if we can get a hold of his brother. There's no coverage on the news about this. Which leads us to believe they're covering something up. Yep, it's got to be a cover-up. Something weird's going on. Where something smells fishy. And we're going to find it, because that's what the whiskey drinkers do when they're not making music. That's right, we do investigative uh, reporting right. on paranormal activities. Mm. That's what we do, goddammit. <laughs>